Magic Johnson has AIDS. And I said, shut the hell up, Grandma. I didn't know that was going to upset people. It really did. <laughs> it really did. People got so mad. And they're like, the fuck is wrong with you? Do I think it's more likely that he did it? Yes. This murderer <laughs> is calling someone else a yeah, murderer. He's like, this guy's a bad guy. I wrote a book called If I Did It, but this guy, <laughs> he definitely did it. 100%. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of Two Bears, One Cave. Sitting in for my regular co-host, Bert Kreischer, is a man whose stand-up comedy special, Lefty Son, is available right now on YouTube. Give it up for all six foot three inches of Ryan Sickler. <laughs> I'm closer to 6'3 than James Brown ever was. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me. It's yeah, good man. To be here. Congrats on the special. Thank you very, very much. Very, very happy for you. Um, you, uh, you, sh you shot it yourself, produced it yourself, directed it yourself. Did it all myself, directed, produced. That's my the friend. way to do it, man. It is these days. If you know how to do it, it yeah. is. I feel like I did a good job, a special on my first one. It looks good. Thank you for all your help. Everybody's, there's been, obviously you can't do this shit without so many people helping. My good buddy Sam Vaughn killed it on this thing. I shot at the Dynasty in yeah. LA. We talked about it. It was just yeah. a great theater. Shout out to them. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it, man. I really am. And, um... Go subscribe to my podcast, The Honeydew. Can I just tell you this? You hit me up about my Patreon when you see those promos and stuff that are wild. In the last just few weeks, I just talked to a guy yeah. who had to have a double lung transplant. Okay, He's born with cystic fibrosis, and they're like, hey, you got about 50 years on those lungs before you're going to need a double lung transplant. A double lung transplant. And he's like, okay, and you have to get in line for that shit. And he goes in for some procedure while well, the surgeon fucking pops his lung. And now it's scarred. So now they're like, remember when we told you at 50 years, you got about 23 on those lungs now. He's like, what? So now he's got to find a double lung transplant. Well, while Wait, he's in the a hospital. a second one? A sec did he have one done? No. He, oh. you, you can run on these lungs, but only for so long, they're okay. telling him. And then they fuck up a procedure and they're like, hey, it's about yeah. half that now. And he's Jesus. like, what? So he's got to find, he's got to get in, you know, the queue for yeah. a double lung transplant. And this, from a weird circle of a friend of a friend, there's some lady whose son is, was dying in the hospital and said, well, why don't we just see what the hell? And they test her son. And he is a, and he said, you go through eight hours a day, five days a week of, cause everything would have to match to put lungs yeah, in you. Sure. And he's a hundred percent match. So he doesn't have to get in line for it now. He skips right to a direct donor. He says he thinks it's the first time in history that's ever happened. And the mom is like, I want to meet the boy whose life my son saved. Yeah. So he's like, oh, he feels horrible. Like, I've got to go meet this family whose child died so I could live. And they're all telling him, man, you're just like him, man. You're just like him. They're like, we want you to meet his girlfriend. He's like, I don't want to meet her. She's going to be super emotional. And they're like, you got to meet her. Well, he meets her. And then they start talking. And they start talking some more. This dude ends up marrying his fucking donor's girlfriend. And they're serious? about to have a baby. Seriously? Yes. That's on my Patreon. It's $5 a month, y'all. That's it. <laughs> The honeydew with y'all. If you if you the don't wildest know, story. So like the honeydew, you you have a lot of times comedians on, actors, you know, people in entertainment, and then you do the Patreon one where you talk to basically it's fans of the show. It's just regular people, regular yeah. folks, but they tell who you who didn't make their lives into comedians, right? Right, entertainment yeah. or people, entertainers. But they tell you, I've seen clips of this shit that, I mean, it's like. I had a baby with my dad and we yeah, like, yeah. like shit like like <laughs> I gave like I that. gave birth in the back seat of a fucking pickup truck and it's all the wildest stories I've Craziest ever heard. Craziest shit I've ever heard about. I life. jumped off a building and I broke both legs and I'm like, what the fuck? That is guy, this? your episode. It, you didn't even indirectly your episode. There was a guy on my podcast who who came to see you here in Austin. That's right. That's and then went right. and partied. Uh, we we FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. I FaceTime and he blacked out. And he went missing. There was a search party looking for this guy for three fucking days after your show. And some homeless dude's like, this guy right here? <laughs> oh, 
literally was laying next to him. And the police came down, like, you mean this guy right here? They're like, yeah, that guy. And they took him in. And he's missing for three days, okay? Imagine that as a parent, right? Jesus. But for him, he's in a coma. He fell off that bat bridge. Yeah. And he's he doesn't know what happened to him still for another fucking month. When he wakes up, they're like, you went to see Tom Segura. You partied. You fell off this bat bridge. You were missing for three. Like, it's nuts. The story. I've talked to people who've died. I just had a kid who was in the Michigan State shooting in the classroom. Jesus. Yeah. And he said he's behind the podium and chunks of water flying off. And he's like, this is how I'm going out. This is how I'm going out. This, by the way, reminds me. This is a total <laughs> pivot from this. But every time I, I'm on the road, I, you know, I, bring, I bring friends to, to do the shows with me. And uh, whenever I bring Jeff Tate... And I post the photos. Sean Nick takes photos. I post, you know, here's the photos from the weekend. People are always like, oh, who's this homeless guy for Jeff Tate? You know, like, nice of you to bring a homeless guy. So we're in, uh, <laughs> we're in some city. <coughs> and he, he said he walked into a 7-Eleven. And when he walks out, <laughs> these two homeless guys are out front. And one of them goes, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "What?" No, he recognized. He's like, "Oh, him. you're not Jimmy. <laughs> you look just like him. Though, you look man. like just like one of the guys we normally hang out <laughs> we with. We hang out with. We've befriended yeah. in yeah. this homeless. Like, You've been Jimmy. here a minute. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I gotta change my shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, we know you, right? <laughs> Jim. Oh, oh fuck God. yeah you have the I, I i mean that's such a awesome like specific thing that you figured out that just i don't know how you figured it out but to hear these these stories are so compelling man they're crazy they're people the crazy. died i mean i've had taught the you got to get this one girl on i'm gonna push for her she was a female gangbanger who made history as the first female in this gang in chicago then got out of the gangbang world and went to a different sort of gangbang world where she runs an S and M club now. And the story she tells about, she talked about, she wouldn't name them, but everyone figured out who the Chicago mayor was that would come in. She told all kinds of stories. Oh, looking for his fix. Have you ever heard of this? Shit? This, this would terrify me. She told this one about a guy who came in um, and, and you lay down on latex and then they vacuum the latex so that it is second skin. Okay. And the only thing that's there is a hole here. You ever hear of this shit? I've seen, yes, yes, yes. That already and like, is, so like you the, can't even move. No, the claustrophobia in me. That's what just, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Even I have anxiety thinking about that's that. That's their thrill. That's part of the thrill. <laughs> the other thrill is they come over and they piss and shit in the mouth hole. What? Yeah. And he chews it. <laughs> and then he gets off. He gets out. He gets he's off. like, thank you so much for that. That was the best. It's I just, the only episode I gagged. And my eyes were water. I was like, ah, in what? The, in the last year, I've heard about um, more sex parties from from people I've met that th things you hear about, you think about like in movies. But is that down here? So uh, one in LA, I heard about um, a friend told me that they're, they were, a neighbor had, uh, one of their neighbors rents their house out and they like, they look over one day and they're like, there's people in tuxedos, just like eyes wide shut. And they're all holding drinks, watching people have sex. And so it was more like the performance, but they're just watching people bang. And I was like, holy shit, that like, it's one of those things you're like, that's really happening. And it was like a real LA high society kind of. And then somebody here told me a story about getting invited to a, a, a party. And that was not uh, watching, that was everybody participating. Oh, it just an turned orgy it, there. a full orgy. Yeah, yeah. And that they told me the whole story, and I was a like, weird Geez. thing." Yeah, I mean, you want to watch me and Cheryl fuck? Yeah, come on over to Tux, man. I kind of get the. What? I feel like that one actually almost makes more sense to me, in the sense that if you wanted like the dressing up and watching it, and maybe not participating, but watching the the spectacle mm -hmm. of it take place, mm -hmm. the orgy one, everybody has to be game, and it's like, and they're meeting people for the first time. You know, they're just like, look, like, hey, what's up? I yeah. say, oh, I can, I, I'm very practical about shit like that. I'm like, yeah. look, like you got STDs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I've yeah. gone all my life without any kind of serious STDs yeah. at all. I mean, I don't. Without I don't any think, kind of serious. STDs. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've had. <laughs> actually, I don't think I've had any STDs. Yeah, I really, really haven't. Yeah, you seem like you're not convinced. No, I mean, 
I'm convinced. Okay, okay, okay. But there was a lot of qualifiers. In yeah, what you're well, saying. I had okay. to roll. I had to okay. go through a Rolodex real right. quick okay. and try to remember some things. But yeah. uh, I've never had an STD. I don't want to get one in my fifties. Like, no, that I feels know. weird. That would be a bummer. <laughs> it would be to it be would, sixty and be like, yeah. I just got general herpes for the yeah, first time. Man. Like, what? It's gonna go 60? into my sunset years with my, with my herpes. <laughs> yeah, that would suck, dude. <laughs> retire with yeah. herpes. Then that's where they actually spread so much too. <laughs> I bet the retirement. Oh yeah, they're yeah. fucking all. Well, also at that point, who gives a they shit? They don't give a you shit. Know? Yeah. Did I ever tell you when I first moved to L.A. going back to your sex party? Party. so i worked at that hotel yeah oh my god there was this guy that would come in young flamboyant rich as fuck always had two prostitutes with him <laughs> nice guy good guy um, he yeah. was la's bad boy at the time this okay. is like late 90s and he would be on the cover of the la weekly he chose like the cops hate me so what he would do is he would take money and he would rent a mansion up in the hollywood hills and he would throw sex parties uh-huh so he invited all of us from the hotel to go to one one time. And I was like, Matt, this is some, this is the shit you hear back home. You know, I'm like, oh, this right. is some real LA shit. Right, right. We're going to go to a fucking mansion party and a yeah. sex party. But the police would bust them all the time and stuff. So they hated this kid, but he would get it going and left before it got busted. So we get up to one and it was the same thing. It's just, it was like the, the dudes at Rogan's club, like Israeli fucking soldier, like one of them standing here with a velvet rope. And in this room, it's just a man and a woman fucking. In this room, mm-hmm. it's a threesome. In this room, it's two guys. In this room, it's two girls. In this room, it's a you can join if you want, but it's very eyes wide shut. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd seen that once. And you went to that? Yeah, we went to that. Did you participate in no, that? No, hell no. I don't I'm not that way. Like yeah. I'm really not. I yeah. it fucking like I mean, if one on one or yeah. two on one. I'll go to yeah. Pound Town all day. Yeah. But would you do would you do you and a guy and a no, girl? Yeah. Never. <laughs> no. I never. Know, I know. Never. Yeah. Never. I don't think so. You would? No, I don't think so. No. I no. think I think I would show up and then I'd be like, oh, come on, man. And I would just turn around and walk out. <laughs> yeah, big no. Yeah. No. I, I think here's the other thing too. For me, visually, women are beautiful. Yeah. I tend to enjoy them too. Yeah. I yeah. would rather look over here. Yeah. And touch this or feel this. Yeah. Then just be like, try not to make eye contact with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or also <laughs> it's like if you were if you're like rolling around and then all of a sudden you um you're like, What's on my leg? And it's like, I'm just getting in position, right? <laughs> <laughs> just ah! Let me just stand over you real quick. All right, I'm good now. Go Come ahead, on, sit back Move down. Move over, baby. Yeah. He's got that basketball injury. Yeah, Move yeah. over. Let him, get in, let him get settled. Oh, sit yeah. back down. <laughs> Your hairy leg touching my yeah. hairy leg. Yeah, Dude, nah. My dick would go so soft. Cause so soft. Your hairy ass leg touching my leg, yeah. or like we're both going into yeah. friction of your shin on my shin. Yeah, I'm like Tom, <laughs> Tom, your shin's burning my shin, man. Don't look at me right. <laughs> Don't look at me right. <laughs> Did you break something? <laughs> <laughs> That's because we're really fucking over here. <laughs> I saw Bert throw my Oreo hat. By the way. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, he got upset about that. Of course he did. Yeah. But also, that hat didn't stink. I didn't wear that hat. That's why I gave it to you guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. I'm a Florida State fan, so. That's right. Then your your brother was. Okay. Yeah, my dad, my brothers, we all like Florida State back in the day. Yeah, that'll make him happy. Dion yeah. will make you you know, Fuck Dion yeah. will make you a fan. I'm rooting for Colorado. I know, man. Guy, he's too charismatic. I love him. Yeah. I love him. I hope he wins it all. Yeah, he's. Uh, I ain't hard to find. <laughs> I hard to find. <laughs> yeah, that first speech he gave was amazing. He's like, I came with my luggage. And it's Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Um, it's one of the best NFL Network commercials. Um, it's uh, he goes to back into the draft. Oh yeah, it? yeah. Oh, it's so good. So funny. The guy put, goes, put him in the afro. Yeah, yeah and yeah. he does the turn around and look at the camera with the crazy mustache yeah. turned sideways and shit. And he goes, "Who's that guy? Looks like ugly ass Deion Sanders yeah. doing that." Show. <laughs> It's so good. Did you just see that clip of um, it was a track meet and some big boy was sprinting like on the I don't know it was like a fifty meter hundred meter race, and as the big guy passes a kid, you're like oh shit he's passing him. He goes like this. Oh yeah and yeah. And he yeah. falls. <laughs> he yeah shit. Yeah and he ate it hard dude. It's so fucking stupid. Those track fucking falls. All that uh, skin ripping off you uh, and shit. I think it was on Sports Center. They what's your what's your uh, do you have a most embarrassing sports moment? Little league or anything? 
I mean, besides my body breaking when I tried to yeah, jump. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. I guess that's embarrassing. No, but as a kid, yeah. Um, I mean, the things that immediately come to mind in football, you know, they always say, keep your head on a swivel. Mm -hmm. So when you play defense, if you're on defensive line, especially, a lot of times you'll, you know, you, you're, let's say you're rushing the quarterback and then he throws the ball. So the pass rush is over. You, you, you know, you're just like done. And sometimes you just kind of like, you kind of like settle back down. You're like, oh, and you can go like, you're looking at, you're basically watching the play because now it's downfield and you turn like this and that boom, you just get lit up by a guy yeah. who's just waiting there for yeah. you. I had a few of those that were, and then the worst like part of that. Decleaters. Decleated is that you get up and you, and your coach is like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So like, <laughs> Like, so you get yeah. double humiliated because you get lit up and yelled at for good. And then you get humiliated the, the third time on film. So then they're like, watch this shit. Watch the girl right look here. Look at Tom. Yeah, look, look at Tom. Look, Everybody look, look at Tom. We are supported by Ridge Wallet. Oh, I fucking love Ridge Wallet. Look how slick these things are. Gifting for dad can be hard, but Ridge is making it easy with one of their biggest sales of the year for Father's Day. The Ridge Wallet expands and holds up to 12 cards. Look how big it gets. Hold on, that's the wrong side. Look at, oh, I don't want to show you my credit card number. <laughs> Plus, it's got room for cash. It's like this slick little thing in the back that you can put my cash on. And it remains as slim as possible. Compare Ridge Wallet to your wallet right now, that bulky piece of crap you have. 30 plus colors and styles, including carbon fiber, burnt titanium, forged ember, and burnt Damascus. Designed with RFID blocking materials that protects you from digital pickpocketers. Get up to 30% off your order when you buy the Ridge Wallet and Key Case together. Ridge team is so confident that you're going to like it that they'll let you test drive it for up to 99 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it, but you absolutely will. I'm telling you, I love that it's this small. Look how big it is compared to my cell phone. It is tiny. Find the best Father's Day gift using my link, ridge.com slash bears. And right now you can save up to 40% off through June 15th. That's ridge.com slash bears. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. Secret time. I am hardcore in a weird place about promoting my movie, The Machine. I am, I, it's all I'm thinking about. I'm putting myself out there like I've never put myself, like I've never put myself out there and I'm uncomfortable. I used to do this for a travel channel and I would find that at the end of the promoting for like Birth Cock or whatever, I would be in a hole. I know that. I recognize that myself. Life's a journey. You're changing always and you're learning about yourself. Here's the deal with me. I prefer to have someone in my life, not my wife, not my kids, not my friends, someone that's like a touchstone to kind of tell me, here's where you were. Here's where you are. Here's what's going on. Let's talk about that right now. I'm in therapy. I've been, I only do online therapy. Uh, I've benefited from therapy. <laughs> Dude, I'm texting with my therapist. I texted him last night and I was like, can we do therapy on the plane? <laughs> because that would be amazing. Listen, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bears today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bears. Y'all want to how to do it wrong? Yeah. Watch time. Watch time. <laughs> I had that. Um, I mean, that happened a few times. Uh, and basketball, I remember one, I was just telling somebody about this, that we always focus when you, when you see like elite passing, you're like, it's some of the, like the, I mean, like LeBron's passing, uh, Djokovic pass, like they, uh, or a uh, Joker's passing is just like, it's so crazy. Like the, the way that they pass, but you have to also give credit to the people receiving those passes, yeah. you know, like those old Jason Williams things where I was just, just like, about to say, I mean, so this like motherfucker, the one with the one with the elbow. Yeah. It's still my favorite it's, one. He goes behind his back, but then hits it with this chicken wing yeah. and it comes back over here. And you got to be ready. But the only guy's got to be ready. So yeah. I'm in a high school game and I remember that I'm playing I, and I, I, I'm I dribbling it. It's two on one. Like the, all the guys on the other side of the cart, we, I have the ball. There's one defender and I have one teammate. And I give a head fake like this and the defender jumps up and I go, I try to be like slick. I go under like this to the to my teammate and he looks up and the ball just hits him and goes out of bounds and I'm like yeah yeah and then I have a coach like think you fucking Jason yeah, Williams right? like, yeah, yeah yeah yelling at you yeah, for it yeah, yeah me and I'm like man I was like why are you looking he's like you faked it I was like yeah that's for him not for you yeah that kind of shit I don't know do you have a bad one 
Yeah, I mean, the worst one ever was um, I scored two goals on my own team in the same game. That was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. That, really? Yeah, and I was good. Too. Two? Two. We went and played this team. It was in Frederick County. I'll still never forget it. I was right back defender, and I went to clear this ball, and I kicked it. And I don't know what the fuck happened. It bananaed like this. It was a little windy, but it wasn't tornado winds, and it hooked back. And our goalie wasn't paying – sorry, Goldie. Yeah. Our goalie wasn't paying attention. And fucking boom, boom, right in the net. And my brother's back there. My brother's on the same team. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, I didn't – that's one in a million. That is one in a fucking million. That's one in a million. Five yeah. minutes later, I do it again. Holy Same shit. Same goddamn thing. And I'm like, it's two in a million. <laughs> <It fucking> was, <laughs> two in a million. Dude, the whole team, the whole team gets on. That's I mean, embarrassing. That yeah. guy died from yeah. doing that in yeah. the World Cup. Remember the auto goal? Oh, Columbian? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they found his ass. Yeah, they did. Um, we had a game. This wasn't me, but one of my teammates. So the opposing team is driving the ball on us, right? We're playing defense. And they're on like, they're on hour 30. So they're, they're 30 yards from the end zone. On one of the plays, it's like a running, a running play, they fumble. Our best, most athletic player scoops it up. He runs into their, he runs the no, wrong way. He yeah. got turned around. He got turned around. And we chase it. We're trying to chase him. And we're like, ah, he's too fast. He high stuff. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> And we you see, we're just like, nah, we're just trying to, we're trying to catch him. We can't catch him. And then he scores and we're like, you just scored in the wrong, you just scored a safety. And he's like, what? And we're like, you just went to the wrong end zone. And then, you know, everybody was like, he was super bummed out. But then everybody's like, yo, he's, it did show how fast he is. <laughs> like, he's so fast. Nobody, nobody could catch nobody him. Nobody could catch his ass. No. One of the, I'll say, this is the most embarrassing thing <laughs> I ever saw. So um, I wrestled in high school and, you know, back then, no one's cutting weight healthy. We're all using hefty bags and, really? you know, just, just not water eating with, yeah. and, you know, sprint, loading clothes on you and sprinting to water weight, just trying to make weight for whatever, you know, class you had to get. And we would do these holiday tournaments and um, we did this Christmas one and there's, you know, like, I don't know, 20 schools show up and um, there's four or five mats out and they're just nonstop going until you pare it down to the finals and then it's all in the center, you know. And this kid um, took some X-Lax. And I know some guys on our team did too. This kid took X-Lax. And in the middle of the mat, oh my God. he shit all over the fucking, like squirting everywhere. Oh. And, and people were like, oh, and they had to stop the fucking, obviously they had to then disinfect the mats, like all this stuff. So my buddy Eric, who you've met several times, he decides he's going to cut weight by taking X-Lax. Well, this, this idiot takes, he's, it says take one. Well, he, he thought it meant one strip, not the square. So he takes a strip. And Eric was really fucking good, too. Like, states, all that. Um, <laughs> and right before the match, he goes down to the bathroom. And back then, we didn't even have doors on our stalls in the men's room. And he's just in there just shitting his guts out. And his house wasn't a mile and a half from the, from the school. And he's like, right call my brother tell him bring me some fresh underpants <laughs> he's shitting can't stop shitting right and he's supposed to go kill this kid that he's about to wrestle yeah. we go up and he's beating him like i don't know fucking 10 to 2 and then all of a sudden we're just watching he just rolls on his back We're like what the fuck's he doing he just lays there he's laying there this kid doesn't even know what to do the ref's looking so the kid just lays on the ref hits the boom <laughs> He sprints off the fucking mat because then I was like, oh, he's going to shit himself. He gave himself up for the loss. He sprinted out of there and then we lost another point for unsportsmanlike conduct because he didn't shake the guy's hand. <laughs> he fucking tossed him. You're going to shit yourself. He's like, I don't give a fuck if I lose. I'm not shit like that kid did that we saw. <laughs> He fucking took He off threw in the towel. Sprint. He yeah. did. He just laid on yeah. his back. Yeah. Like, come on, hurry up. Get me, get me, get hurry me. Hurry up, yeah. dude. Do it quick. Holy I got Holy shit. shit. Was he a big dude, too? And yeah, they were he, heavyweights. Yeah. Those oh, two going at it, man. Dude. That kid just, they're all looking like, what am I supposed to do? And he's uh. just like, come on, pin me. <laughs> pin, pin me, dude. Pin me, please. So I don't shit. There was a kid at the, um, at the uh, high school. There was a couple kids at this high school down the street from ours. One of them, they called him Dirty D Dirty Delroy, because he wore cleats to class, and they were like, what? "Yeah, they're like he's nasty, dude." That is nasty. Yeah, they're like, he always had nasty <laughs> cleats on. But there was another kid 
who they were like, he's just a pig. And he one time shit his pants in the game and then kept it in there. <laughs> they said he would jump on uh, piles oh, and no. just like, like roll, roll around. around. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the coach found out and threw him out of the game. He's like, get the fuck out of here with that, like, <laughs> with that yeah, shit. Yeah, with that shit in your pants. Yeah, we used to wrestle against this, um, you know, like those those like neighborhood legend guys. You're like, oh man, we got to go up against it. There was this black dude named Mike Jones at Westminster. Mike Jones, yeah. Who? Mike Jones. And uh, he was so good at wrestling. Yeah. And he would just fuck your mind, and then you couldn't help it. And he would he would whisper what he was going to do to you, and then pin you. Oh my god! And he would do it. And it would stun you for a second because you, you we all heard like he's going to yeah. whisper and then you're like, yeah. so you're waiting for the whisper. And yeah. then when you whisper, you, you all you got to do is pause yeah. a second. He would just go cradle and then boom, he'd hit you in a cradle. <laughs> he'd go headlock and yeah. boom. Next yeah. thing you know, because you're paying attention to that. The next thing you know, you're on the mat. It's like, boom, like he got me in the headlock. It's, Told me he was going to do, do it. Do you ever watch those? <laughs> He was a badass. That's a bad motherfucker. Mm -hmm. when you get, do you ever watch on YouTube? There's endless, endless amounts of these. I literally have been watching these for, I feel like for a couple of years. And every other time I go on YouTube, because now it's, it's, it's in my algorithm. There'll be another one that I haven't seen. All the Larry Bird stories. Oh, yeah. Dude, if you want to, if you want to fucking shit your pants, you watch, just Google Larry Bird trash talking. And it's all like, Every NBA legend that you respect from the 80s, 90s into the early, they're like, man, you don't want to fuck with Larry Bird. And they're, they all say the same thing, that they'd be playing, they're playing a the game, and he would like, he'd be by their bench, and he'd be like, you guys want to see some shit? And they're like, what? <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to get the ball right here, and I'm going to shoot it right there in that dude's face. And they're like, what the fuck? And they're like, he would get the ball, Dribble to exactly where he said he was going to get it and shoot it. And he'd be like, told you. And they're like, how is he doing this? And then he would do it throughout the game. He would tell certain guys, he'd be like, oh, you guys are not double teaming me? He's like, it's going to be a long day That's for you guys. That's a mistake right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like and that. they were like, okay, get the ball. And he was like, there. and then he would just be like, uh, two, two shots or two dribbles, uh, pull up right here. Um, I'm going to do a, a crossover spin corner three and they're like everything that he said he would do exactly what he said and then he would make it there was one game i think where he's like i'm just gonna play left hand and he left got like handed. 30 points yeah. or some shit yeah. like that so you're like god damn dude yeah. all all left hand i'm telling you what i'm gonna do he told i think it was a, a one of the lakers i think yeah so he liked he respected byron scott and so they he gets to the forum and he sees byron in like a boot and he's like what's going on with you he's like i uh I got ankle, so I'm not playing it. He's like, you're not playing. He's like, well, who's guarding me? And then he goes, so-and-so. He's like, a white guy? He goes, that's disrespectful. <laughs> he said it was disrespectful to put a white he's guy. he's a white guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he's there like, he went for like 48 that game. Yeah. I just saw this interview, and I don't know who it is, an older black guy talking about Larry Byrne. It's, it's like a... Um, an award ceremony or something. All yeah. the, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. All the NBA guys. He's yeah. like, I'm driving from wherever, Alabama to yeah. Arkansas. And yeah. I'm here, bird this and bird that and yeah. bird this. And I, he's like, man, I said, that brother can play. And the <laughs> yeah. next day he saw a picture. He's like, that's Larry Bird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's listening to the radio. <laughs> and he saw it in the paper. Yeah, he's brother like, can this play, brother man. can play. <laughs> Jamal Mashburn has a great, great story on YouTube about Dream Team. <clears throat> he's like the he's like so that was when the dream team was 92 and he's like to prep like to to get the guys in practice they would put like an all-star college team and he said like they were all you know they're all the biggest names in college he's like we're just like hanging out one day and like, he's like first thing is you don't realize how fucking big larry larry, larry bird's legit 610 he's a big he that big I yeah know he's, he's, he's a tall. big fuck and he said they're all like <laughs> he said they're all like Sitting there, like, you know, kind of like modest, like, oh, what's up? And then Labor's like, are you guys the college guys? And they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. And he's like, make sure you get some rest. It'll be a long fucking week for you, okay? <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> he's just talking shit the whole time, man. They're just, they said he was just savage, man. Savage dude. That team, there'll be never nothing ever like that team. No, ever. 
that that's team sick. was just right there. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that. Robinson, Ewing, Bird, Pippen, Pippen. Jordan. It's stupid. It's Clyde, Malone, Stockton, Mullen, Barkley. I mean, magic. It's just magic. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And they were all still getting out. I mean, they were beating people by like 60 points. Embarrassing. You know what else happened in that era? Put your headphones on, man. This is a uh, early 90s was just a real fun time. I'll show you, see if you this looks familiar to you at all. <laughs> hey, Twitter world, it's me, yours truly. Well, a whole lot of people are asking me what I think about this uh, Alex Murdoch trial. I don't know why they think I'm an expert on it, but... I think we know. <laughs> I think we know why. I don't know why they think I'm an expert. Also, the casual chuckle with the fucking glasses on, on his head. head. This yeah. motherfucker right here don't give a OJ shit. OJ feels the need to comment on all like social things. Anything that happens in the NFL, anything that's happening like in like the in culture politically, um, and then in the cases and in, in, in criminal cases, and right now he's commenting on that Murdoch. Uh, uh, this is a, a tweet that he posted or a video he posted through Twitter when that Murdoch guy was on trial for murdering his wife, wife and son. Yeah. He's like, I don't, I don't know why they hit me up. <laughs> why y'all asking me about what? a double murder, man? <laughs> asking me. <laughs> What do I know about I murder? stole trophies and cleats, man. man That's all I did. Anyway. Uh, I got to admit, when he took the stand, mm -hmm. a guy who's an habitual liar, I did watch. He's a liar. Um, um, when the trial first started, yeah, uh, I watched him take the stand, and I uh, thought it was probably a mistake because the guy is an admitted liar, <laughs> and it's hard for me to think he can be on the stand five, six, seven, eight days uh, without lying. Right question is what did he lie about uh but lying and stealing money is a little different than murder uh i realized in watching them testify what he was doing he was just trying to relate to one or two of those jurors that he was a good old boy he was one of them uh and i'm not sure he didn't succeed in doing that uh i am not qualified to to really say if the guy did it or he didn't do it right uh you know if a juror missed an hour you of testimony they no longer qualified i've missed days that i haven't watched this right um uh but from what i've seen do i think it's more likely that he did it yes <laughs> yeah i mean I this murderer it. is calling someone else a yeah murderer. he's like this guy's a bad guy <laughs> This guy definitely did this it. This guy definitely he did it. Did it. He did I, it. I wrote a book called If I Did It, but this <laughs> guy, <laughs> he did definitely did it. Uh, he's going to go to jail for all the thievery he did, thievery. stealing millions of dollars of yeah. people. I think he should be looked at more about the death of his housekeeper a few years ago where he ended up with over $4 million of the insurance money. Hmm. Um, I think they should take a hard look at that. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me in the least if this guy beats this case oh who uh, else has he's gonna case? go to jail <laughs> he's gonna go to jail for all the money he stole i'm curious there because uh i got nine to 33 years <laughs> 33 years because i caught some guys trying to sell my stolen property and i yelled at them even i caught some guys <laughs> nine to 33 because i yelled at some yeah people. i yelled <laughs> <laughs> he yelled at him. He says, I caught them. Hey, man. <laughs> Getting arrested on you the stealing ground. stealing my shit. 33 yeah. years yeah. in prison for that. <laughs> oh, Jay, it's fucking crazy, dude. A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your family will have a safety net to cover mortgage payments, college costs, or other expenses so they can get back on their feet and focus on what's most important. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for a 1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another. So 
You can trust their guidance. There are no additional fees, and your personal details are private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash two bears, one cave, or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash the number two bears, the number one cave. He is crazy. He well, is. I just told a buddy of mine, we were on the phone, and we were talking about this murder case. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I think I the guy know. might be able to uh, get some reasonable doubt uh, yeah. there. But I said, if the verdict comes back tomorrow, he's going to be guilty. Yeah. If the verdict comes back uh, next week sometime, that means they're probably fighting. Right. Uh, one thing that I was told by the <laughs> lieutenant uh, of the sheriff's department uh -huh. uh, when I was incarcerated. Uh, Which in, time? In, in one of my cases. and uh, <laughs> My double homicide. After the police officers had testified in my case, uh, all of the sheriff's department, they ran the jail, not the prison, but they ran the jail, and right. that's where I was being housed. Uh, they said, you're going home. And I said, well, how can you guys be so sure? They said, when a jury sees somebody as lying, especially police officers, uh, they won't convict and like it or not, those police officers, it was pretty uh, apparent that they were lying about Yeah, he's stuff. right about that. One, the thing that really that helped him out in the end was that there was a bunch of crooked-ass LAPD. Yeah, Mark Furman and Furman, those but guys. That, and yeah. also, remember they had video of the of the when the when when the police were on the scene, and they were just walking, like, no booties on, just walking over evidence, walking on blood. They weren't doing any of the procedural mm -hmm. stuff you're supposed to do, like, on a crime scene. And they, and they were all... Lying, they all did lie about what they what they were there to do and how they were supposed to do it. So he was he is right about that. But it's interesting that, that people ask OJ. I don't know why they ask him about this stuff, man. It's kind of, it's just I mean, that is mental illness. There for you to get away. If, <laughs> if I got away with double murder, I'm you're never. I'm never popping up on social media. Nothing. But no, and you don't have to post these videos. He's right. Like, Hello, Twitter world. Yep. Uh, I don't yeah. know why people keep asking me. <laughs> really, <laughs> really. You know, the funniest thing happened today. Somebody asked me about a murder case. Uh, that's what he's doing right he now. He literally was like, I don't know why people keep asking about this murder. Okay. And then the next video is like, I was on the phone talking to my friend about this murder. Okay. <laughs> it's all you're doing, yeah. dude. What are you talking hey, about? Hey, OJ, what do you think about this case? He's like, well, it's funny that you asked me of all people, but I'll, I'll, I'll share my opinion. He's wild, dude. He has said in other interviews when they go, do you ever go back to L.A.? He's like, I don't go back to L.A. because I don't, I don't know if the killer is going to be like right next to me. He's, Come on. I swear to God. He yeah. said that? He has said that, yes. He's like, I, I don't know if I'm sitting down for lunch and, and, and all of a sudden right, right over my shoulder, the murderer is right there. <laughs> Get the fuck out of <laughs> here. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy <laughs> to say that. Yeah, that guy's still out there, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why is he coming after you now, OJ? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. He got away with double murder. Yeah. Why is he coming that after guy. you, OJ? That guy. <laughs> the waiter could stab me in my back. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that. He said that. <laughs> and somebody, that is so arrogant. So it's, it's so arrogant. Have you ever seen also Whew. that video of those two girls? Wait, you got to look look this up. There are, he's sleeping. So uh, He's sleeping in like, I don't know if it's his place or a friend's place. And these two like, Young blonde girls, you could tell it's late, and they're like, <laughs> and they walk out, they're like, wake up, and they wake him. He's like, hey, 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 and they're, they're just like having fun with OJ, like they're being all playful. And you realize, like, these these chicks don't know who they're fucking with, they you know don't. what I mean, and they're definitely his type, <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. know who they're fucking yeah, with, yeah. It's it's these, they wake him up, oh, yeah, look. Two blonde women. I sw and then he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, they wake him up at 1 o'clock in the morning. And he's just like enjoying his, his, uh, his, little, his little nap. And he, oh, he's like, oh. <laughs> and they think it's hilarious. They're laughing. Go back and actually find the video. Find the video while we're talking. Um. Yeah, but this uh, there's there's probably I don't know if there's anyone we can actually liken his story to, right? Like he is the ultimate like and and also to 
He, he's, the thing about, I'm trying to think, like I'm going through. What you're again, saying like, though makes sense because you know what, like old like mafia dudes do when they get away with something, they just stay under the you ghost. Know, they become ghosts, and I feel like his narcissism is what keeps him from being like, hey, to, like you don't have to post any of this. Shit. None of it. Here's yeah. my question to him: ignorant to a lot of this stuff is. Can, can he still be tried for that double murder? Or is that, that's the, what do they call it again? Double uh, jeopardy. Double jeopardy. Yeah, so he's, cannot. they can never get him on that. Even if he says now on his social media, I did it. They can't. You get can't him. try him for that. You can try him for other things, but not for that. Right. Civilly, you can go after him, which is right. what they did. Yeah. The um, Goldmans. I think this is it here. Let's see. <laughs> he said, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Come on, OJ. There's a knife under that pillow. They better. <laughs> Let's get up. Let's get up. Open up. Wiggy, wiggy, hands up your sneaky. Come on. The kids, man. The kids. Come on. The kids. The kids. It's like going to the zoo and throwing shit at the tigers. At the sleep, right? <laughs> it really <laughs> fucking is. <laughs> like, that tiger. <laughs> that tiger stretches out. Yeah, it's going like, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck you, up. you don't want to fuck with that and then there's this clip we have of um he's on another he's on a podcast i wish we'd get him on this podcast this one right here i was gonna say i just saw this yeah you, you guys yeah. should have yeah I, I would love to to let's see here yeah so has anyone ever asked you like who you thought did it i'm not gonna talk about this okay got it okay all right you got anything uh, no, I don't think so. Nice Fucking, try, <laughs> he tried. Can I ask you one thing, though? What's that? <laughs> I don't know if you're an answer, but how much have you spent on lawyer fees, you think, today? Oh, geez, a fortune. Just flat out fortune. Over, yeah. under $3 million. Over, yeah. Fuck. Damn. His life. It's a lot of money. $3 million. Yeah, but it yeah. bought him freedom. It sure did. Well, it from the double murder did. He got caught with the trophies and the yeah. cleats and shit. Yeah. But uh, three million. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about this. And, and by the way, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, that case. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I would love to have him on. Try to book him to be a guest bear. <laughs> you should definitely do that. I, I was the first thing I'd be like, man, I want to ask you about a couple of murder cases. Why do you want to ask me? Yeah, why? <laughs> why me? Where are we at with that Murdoch case? <clears throat> I was just talking to my friend about it the other day, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, if they come back quick, he's guilty. Uh, I don't know why everybody wants to know this from me, but if they take their time, that probably means they found something. Now, the sheriffs that run the jail, what they would do is they used to come back and tell me, like, that's why people are asking you, man, because you've been through this right. whole fucking yeah. thing before. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're well aware of how this works. <laughs> They're not tagging Lance Ito, bro. Yeah. They're hitting you up. <laughs> your ass up. Yeah. Yeah. People are going to ask him, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock, what she thinks, because she doesn't have a fucking clue. Yeah, That's right. Why. <laughs> it's because you've murdered two Killed people. Killed two people. <laughs> That's why they want to know. You know how you almost severed their heads off? You killed two people. That's why. <laughs> now, who do you think did? I don't want to get into all that bullshit. Let's not mess around with that bullshit, man. Why are we fucking around? <laughs> That was a long time ago, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. I killed them a long time ago, man. Oh, my God. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that was the early 90s, man. I remember where you were? Yeah. When, I was, the, when the Bronco chase yep, happened? I was back in Maryland. I just, um, it was summer vacation from college. I went back home, and I was in my friend's kitchen. And I'm watching, there was a TV there, and I'm watching the fucking Bronco chase. I'm like, holy shit, they're going right down the fucking 405. Yeah, <laughs> it's so crazy. Oh, my God. For Ford's Bronco, OJ Chase may have helped sales. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, I like that thing. That's, that's a nice. Good, that's a good car to run from the police in. Yeah. That is a good looking truck. I do like Broncos. Yeah. He's in the back of that thing right now. Laying down. After yeah. killing two people. Yeah. And they're not doing anything. Keep going, AC. Yeah. That's a wild time, man. I was at basketball camp at the University of South Florida in Tampa. And they 
we had camp and then you know it was a, it was all day you just play basketball all day and then you break for lunch and you go back to the dorm room and then you go back and again and the, the next morning because we, we didn't have the same access to media when you're in camp. We also didn't have cell phones yeah. or anything back then, too. You got to be by a TV to see this thing. And they told us in the morning, they're like, I don't know if any of you guys heard, but O.J. Simpson uh, he got arrested for murder. All right, let's hit the free throws. <laughs> we were like, what the <laughs> fuck? Wait, like, what? Yeah. Lay up. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Wait, he just say hurt. Yeah, like, and just... uh, Magic Johnson's got AIDS. Let's right, line, line up two line by up. two. Let's go. <laughs> Chest passes. <laughs> like, hey, what's happening? What is going on? What's happening, yeah. man? <laughs> this, is, this is our. This is how we get into adulthood. <laughs> we're like, I thought we were kids. <laughs> like, no, nah, this is what happened. Nah, man, two people are dead. One's got AIDS. Let's line uh, up. Let's go two <laughs> by two layups. <laughs> but Magic's real rich. He's gonna beat that shit. All right, let's go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they said OJ almost cut off one head. All right, let's rebound. Let's go rebound. <laughs> Box out, everybody. Box out. <laughs> <laughs> that was how you found out information. That back is. Then. You got half ass bits, yeah. and then you had to go home and, you, and no try questions. to watch the You're like, what? Like, what? like, what? Just get, yeah. I get remember mad. telling them, I've, I've told my grandmom to shut the hell up one time. And it's when I walked into her house. I'll never forget. This is how I found out Magic Johnson had AIDS. I walked into her house and she's sitting in her little rocking chair. And I walked in. She goes, Magic Johnson has AIDS. And I said, shut the hell up, Grandma. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was HIV positive. And that I was, was like, such a, that spooked everybody. Up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was the, I mean, because I remember Arthur Ashe right mm -hmm. arthur, arthur ash got it and that poor guy he had a mu much i feel this like a blood transfusion or something yeah wasn't it? and people were extremely cruel about it. like everyone was like he's gay yeah. you know like he definitely got it from gay shit and and he had had it's like clear you know records of his surgeries and blood trans whatever he was going through medically and it's definitely how he got it but people were like really cruel to him about it and he was he stayed so humble and 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 just took like the, you know, this pub like public cruelty in a way, right? But like with magic, I was just like, it just didn't feel like it was possible. I think also because of his physical stature, mm -hmm. you just go like this big, like huge human. I mean, six nine, you know, On, and playing at the highest at the level, high, like, of such a sport, great. You're yeah. like, I, I, for me, it was more inconceivable. And he was, you know, he's, he seemed like a superhero. Like those guys were like. And, you know, he had that million megawatt smile and the way that he played was so, it was so crazy. I just, yeah, I remember that I was in Milwaukee for. I remember that. And like, he's retiring? Because that's the thing is when you hear the, re you're like, what do you mean he's retiring? How are you going to retire? And he's like, I can't play anymore. Because, and then later on, you learn that he was just like, fucking like 12 women in the locker oh, room. Yeah. Like, uh, like after a game, he was like, her, 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 and her. And they all came back. They're like, holy shit. Tell Cookie I'll be out there in a minute. And it's supposed to be yeah. so, so, so difficult for men to get it from females. You know that? Like even if you a woman has it, you, you don't, it doesn't necessarily transfer to the man. It's really difficult. He must have had so much sex. Together. So much. Yeah. You know who else had AIDS? Oh, Easy e He's, you know, he had yeah, AIDS too, true. didn't he? Yeah, yeah he yeah, did. Yeah. You guys know about that. We know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a sleep mask you can get. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. You guys gave me one, actually. I'm going to wear it on my flight back today. It just takes the bougie out of a sleep mask. People are definitely not going to be asked, tapping me to ask me anything. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> they ain't nobody asking me to help put their bag up. If they did, I would pop it up right here, too. But I'll be, of course I'll help you. <laughs> Easy, yeah. I'll have, my, I'll have my mask like OJ has his glasses up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest thing we've ever put out. I Could think. you imagine having to ask that person for help? Oh, this guy's got an easy E head AIDS eye mask <laughs> on, but I really need some help. I need some help. <laughs> this is the only person I can ask. Excuse me, sir. Oh. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> easy E head AIDS. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. Craziest shit. I can't believe you guys. I can't believe you must have death threats. Stop here. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to upset people. It really did. <laughs> it really did. It really upset I know people. It did. Yeah. yeah. I walked. <laughs> <laughs> 
people got so mad. <laughs> and they're like, the fuck is wrong with you? No, I was just trying to let people sleep comfortably. <laughs> to, that really is the goal. <laughs> that is the goal. The goal is to have you just oh, sleep, God. sleep comfortably. <laughs> Just rest. I just want you to. Rest. <laughs> the fuck is with that sleep mask? <laughs> it would be interesting to sit like in first class, so that everyone has to pass by yeah. it and see it, and see how many see people react, like- or even actually say, "Hey, man, that shit ain't cool, man." <laughs> Somebody will. Yeah. But uh, isn't your defense though? But he did. Like, he, he did <laughs> though, right? He did. Tell me it's inaccurate. <laughs> is this not factually? <laughs> That um, you know who else got it was that boxer. Remember that big white boxer, Tommy, Tommy Morrison. Morrison. Yeah. He had AIDS. He had AIDS. God damn. Yeah. Was that sexually transmitted? I or? don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to guess, but I'm gonna say it was probably drugs. Rock Hudson. He was gay. He yeah. Had, yeah. That was the other one. That that's when the gay like. That's when he got gay cancer. That's when yeah. AIDS like really started. Because my grandmother yeah. was like. Rock Hudson has AIDS. And yeah. I was like, who the fuck's Rock Hudson? She's like, oh, he was a beautiful movie. And star. like every and woman like, from that era, that was in the era where that you don't you didn't say you're gay. Right. So every woman was like, he's a dreamboat. Right. They all loved him. And he was like, I want I don't want to be with you. Yeah. They thought yeah. Liberace wasn't gay. Yeah. 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 yeah sure. Fucking guys just got dicks fucking in his throat, you know, <laughs> singing with them in there. He's got dick rings on <laughs> Like ten little dicks on his hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They would um there's still like women who are like he was just he's just a performer. Mm-hmm. That that the era of that woman is, who's like 85 now just didn't buy that. No. Yeah. He, he was, was just a nice he was a good man. Yeah. He was a nice. He just man. liked to dance. Yeah. He liked music. Dance. Yeah. Yeah, Rock Hudson. What did Rock Hudson look like again? I know he was a handsome dude. But he was um Yeah, this was like the first famous Yeah, look yeah. at that good-looking dude. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. Look at him. Just plowing dudes assholes day and night all day and night yeah and then it just took them right yeah pool parties like this this was like hollywood hills and just you know no none of the fans knew but it was just all guys going to his house for like saturday orgies and shit yeah handsome dude there he is right there pretending to like a woman (laughs) 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 yeah Unreal. Yeah, that was it. It was Rock Hudson yeah. and then Magic. Arthur Ashe. Arthur right? Ashe. Tommy Morrison. Then it seemed to like wow, when did, disappear. And, and did Tommy Morrison died, right? I think he did. And then it just sort of, not disappear, but you know, sort of got quiet. Isn't like, the, the story of Magic the most incredible where he doesn't test positive anymore? Yeah, that's crazy. He doesn't test positive know, for HIV. Nuts. So... You know, I, I that, that wild. Mean, that means that there's a cure. Then, well, they they say this now that HIV is no longer a death sentence, right? So like, you get it, you can actually livable. You can, you're taking a bunch of pills and cocktails. You're taking probably, a bunch of yeah. stuff, but like you can live like a full life. But this dude, his blood does not show HIV in it anymore. That is what's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, he he tests negative now. I don't understand obviously how that works but it's somehow possible he's still a massive man yeah too. he's also a man that has enough money to do all the experimental shit yeah. anything that could help him that the regular person who has hiv out there doesn't get true they true. get the fucking kaiser permanent they fucking package yeah. magic ain't getting kaiser no, no magic's know? not kaiser no. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you're gonna have to come back for three appointments before we can even like it'll kill me by then. It he's, might. It he's might. my favorite um wholesome Instagram account. You ever follow you ever follow him on Instagram? Mm-hmm. It's the one he's like he he posting, he's like he's on a European he takes a yacht to Europe every summer with his wife and 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 friends. And then it'll be like, We're in Greece today. I had the fish. It was delicious. It's, and just, it's just like a picture of a fish. And it's that. And then the next day he's like, This pasta was so good. <laughs> it's just like a picture of the pasta. And then the next day he's like, We went shopping today. And it's just like <laughs> pictures of shopping bags. Or he'll be like, this is my friend Drake, you know? Just finished wishing Cookie a very happy birthday. Cookie is a very fucking patient lady. Yeah. It was, a, it was truly an outstanding meal. I recommend going to Paris. <laughs> it's, it's like... Somebody so, does that for him. I There's don't know. There's no way that's mad. It, it feels it might be. more like him because he is like that real... I mean, here we go. 
Another trip around the sun from my incredible wife, best friend, Cookie Johnson. There's that one. And yeah. And then he'll be like, I met the mayor of Athens today. <laughs> and, yeah, he does. I swear to God. It's always, wholesome. It's, it's super wholesome. Me and Sam Jackson. And yeah. That's just it. It's one of my favorite actors, Sam Jackson. Yep. Just post a picture of him and that person. It's always the most simple quote, like direct to what it is. And like, this is all that this is. Uh, I want to share with the world and Cookie Art Champions again. Wow, what a great game. I am so happy for our players. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. That is, yeah. Yeah, if you scroll down to find his like his actual vacation stuff, it is the greatest. He does it every year. Oh, that might be them on vacation right there. There he is. We're in the beautiful town. It was a thrill for us to see an active volcano today. Have you seen the um, Magic and verse Larry or something like that? It's called the Mag- where where Larry Bird talks about how much his mom loved Magic so much. When no, he- oh, it's so good. So Magic goes to visit Larry Bird, uh-huh. and this is when Larry's telling a story about Magic had when Magic got AIDS. Um, and he's crying about it, and he's he said that you know Magic comes to the his mom's house. He's like, my mom loved Magic, like made him food and everything, like just loved him. Larry said this, yeah. And at first, Larry's like, why the fuck's this guy here? You know, we and then he came, and his mom's like, I like that Magic Johnson. This is when, like, they're in college still, or this is. A- I think it's like right when they're getting out of college and they're both starting to get at it in the NBA, and they start to be friend frenemies a little bit at first. You yeah, know? like fuck this guy. Yeah. Because Magic will go up to shake his hand. Larry Bird's like, I ain't fucking shaking your hand. Yeah. You know, we're about to go at it. Yeah. Um, but he talks about how just like everyone loved Magic. Yeah. And he's like, my so mom charismatic. fell in love with him yeah. and, you know, just so nice and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know, did you know that Larry went, why he went to Indiana State? He went to Indiana State. Was it because the Ho- something about the Hoosiers yeah, yeah. rejected he, him or something? No, he went. To Indiana, he did, and he for hated Bobby Knight. And he hated him so much that he left school. He was like, "I oh, fuck this guy." Oh, it's re- it's just about Bobby Knight. It's just about Bobby Knight. Oh, okay, left there, that. had to sit out a year because of the rules at the time of the NCAA, and then re-enrolled at or enrolled at Indiana State and played at uh, obviously a much lesser program just yeah. to be like, "Fuck you, Bobby Knight." Yeah, that's the only reason he went no there. Shit. Yeah, there's another story that um, Magic tells that's great where he was like. He had he had heard about Bird, and then he's like, I go to this thing, and I, I, I think he plays in like some, it was like an All Star game, and um, he's like he's like me and Larry are on the bench, to, instead of starting because, the uh, the coach of this All Star thing is Kentucky's coach, and he starts three Kentucky guys, a couple, so he's like, but then we sub in. And he's like, we fucking slice and dice them. And uh, he's like, he said that uh, Larry was on the player of the year. He was, guard, he was guarding the player of the year from, I don't know if it was Kentucky or another program. He goes, he just tore his ass up. He's like, I left there and I called home. I was like, this white dude can play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they say he's a fucking psycho, man. Total psycho. Dion was a good one too with the fucking, the, I, I always love like, I don't know. I've never had that confidence or swagger in anything I've been able to do. Like when when there's stories about like Dion when he's about to be drafted, the oh. Giants or someone gave him this book that was like yeah, this thick, and he was true. like, and they're like, learn that book, and he's like, when y'all when y'all picking, they're like tenth. He's like, I'm gonna be long gone before that, and walk the yeah, fuck off. Take your book yeah. back. Yeah. I wish I could be calm. Like yeah. you get that fucking shit out of here. I ain't gonna be tenth. And then he ran. He just ran the forty mm-hmm. in um, another player's shoes. He's like, I don't have my shoes, so somebody else lent their shoes to him. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if they were the right size. He ran his 40, which is like supposed to be one of the fastest 40s ever That's at the combine. Say, yeah. And then he just went right into a limo. <laughs> and like, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See y'all later. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think any of us experienced that level. Man, of that is, you got to know you're fucking worth that shit. Yeah. He knew early on. Some dude who was just at the combine had the... um he did the, uh, he tore his like, ACL or something that day. Just running? Yeah, lineman. And then he went and did the bench press. But the thing is, 
Like if you've benched before, you you yeah, dig you your you plant your feet, you know, like you plant your feet and it helps you you ground yourself, you know, you pull your back. Um is this what is this to do right here? Yeah. This kid, Andrew Voorhees. Te yeah, he tore his ACL. So he's doing it with his leg out out like this, which and is he did, 30, he did 38 reps. Holy yeah. crap. And if you watch him do it, I watched him I've do it. I've done 10, 225. I've done it 10 times reps is my most ever. That's great. Yeah, but I was also in college and shit. But still, that's this Dude, guy's doing almost four times If you watch the that. weight move, it looks like it's the bar. You know what I mean? Like the, the resistance, he's just like bop, 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 bop. 38 reps with his Jesus. with his leg out. So he could have done flat. more. Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure he could have. Yeah, no, he would have been into Fuck. the 40s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy what some of these guys are capable of doing like they're they're just other level i just also think these guys are getting so big now that their look bodies this. look at this fucking guy oh, yeah. right so he's gonna keep that right leg like oh, it, it's, he it's, can't yeah, it can't braced. ground him yeah you can't dig it into like you like to if you're benching you want to dig your heels into the ground you know especially if you're going for like a max rep thing you know He's just going to have that shit like laying out casually. That's literally all chest. Yeah. Yeah. But look how it moves. Like it moves so, it's so fluid. You're like, that's 225? I mean, it's moving like it's just a bar. It's like one. Oh, my two. God. <laughs> that is like a straw. Look yeah, at right? it. Right? Like that's a broom. He said, I, there's no I don't way. think I could do a broom 38 times. I my arms are tired I know. <laughs> yeah. Look at this motherfucker. Yeah. Just fucking. Only person I think I could do more than that is probably any. Any could whoop this dude's ass. <laughs> any would be like, fuck you, man. I got this shit. Give me like a week to train. That's right. That's it. all you need is a week. Look at this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Just. I think these guys are getting so big that they're. ACLs, Achilles, all that. They can't they can't sustain the size. The size of them. Yeah. I, I feel like most of these guys these days should get like uh what is it, preemptive surgery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, like just go get your ACLs and your Achilles repaired. Before you even yeah. need to. If yeah. you're gonna be that massive, They're huge. it's gonna pop sooner or later. Well, I mean the the way that athletes grew from when like when I was a kid in the eighties, the average lineman in the NFL it's like 265, 275. That's and, a tight end. And and if a team ha had a 300 pounder, they'd be like, we got a goddamn elephant on this <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah, like, yeah. There was like one. There'd be like one. It wasn't even like every team. Now the whole line is that. Everybody. Yeah, like, you try. You, yeah, you try. I mean, they're low, like the lowest weight you'll find is like 305, 310. That'd be like the, the light guy. That's crazy. And then there's tackles that are 335. Three, I mean, that's fucking huge. Huge. huge and they're six seven yeah they're massive yeah massive. big fucking dudes big dudes yeah that kid is um but see that that right there just bought that kid doing that the fact that he went with his torn acl coaches and and scouts and you know gms are like this kid's fucking kind yeah, of they're coming over oh they're shit. like yeah. he had his leg in a brace and he still went out there and banged 30 out 38 reps that's yeah. what we want on this fucking team <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah they love that shit man did you ever have coaches like that that were just like, like, why the defense not work? Huh? <laughs> you ever have those guys? You ever have football coaches like that? Smacking children. I had a, I had Smack a. Smacking children. <laughs> you ever have a coach open field tackle a player oh and fuck it, who was freshly paralyzed a week just, before? Just had his neck in a brace. <laughs> You pussy ass motherfucker. Yeah. Had his neck in a brace and you're tackling him. You're the coach. Call me a hoe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had, man, I had coaches I loved. You ever coached you fucking... So I had one coach in Little League who was in a wheelchair. He was paralyzed. He was paralyzed. That's dedication. He's coaching? And that was peewee football. Peewee football. This was in... I bet somebody out there might see this and actually find out who this was. Cause I loved this dude. I was. This was like fourth and fifth grade football. And sixth grade football. Yeah. Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade football in the suburbs of Minneapolis. So I was living in Plymouth. And coach uh, had was paralyzed from an ac a diving accident, um, like at a lake somewhere. He he dove, broke his neck or spine somewhere. He was in a he was in a wheelchair, and he was you know 
I mean, I want to say when I was, I'm 10 years old, he had to have been in like his 50s or something. And his sons would, his, his sons were, you know, adults. And, and the, so it was like, you know, they had, but he was the head coach and he had like the, the motorized chair. Um, and he would like, you know, he would, he was like a, a drill sergeant. We're, we're kids, but we fucking love this guy. I mean, I just want to see elbows and assholes, get it, you know, like all that shit. And he would bark at us, but we fucking, we just loved the dude. I don't know. We just, we just adored that guy. And I remember that he would yell and yell, but we just, we wanted his approval. I yeah. think that was that. We just wanted his approval so much. I loved that dude. I had another coach who had like a, sorry, that was like fourth grade. I think it was what it was. What, and another coach who his son was like, this incredible, I was a center and his son was a quarterback and we were doing like shotgun formation and flea flickers and shit. And his son was throwing crazy, crazy fucking passes. And I remember years later, I was like, man, I, I wonder what, cause that kid was such a good athlete. I was like, I wonder if he, and he found me on Facebook and he end, ended up, he had a scholarship to Wisconsin. Oh, no shit. Yeah. And so I, I, I talked to him for a second and then my favorite coach in high school was named Wally Myers, Coach Myers, which we loved playing for. And he ended up leaving and Coach Harbin, Chuck Harbin. I loved playing for that guy. They weren't like um, beat your ass, but they were, they were tough on us, but it was like tough love. So I loved playing for those guys. Um, and, you know, they, no, they weren't like abusive, but they were demanding, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then my, when Myers left, we had Coach Rock, um, and he came in. I was a shit. Was I a senior? I think yes. Yeah, so I only had him for last year. He's the one. I think I told you we had a bye week, so it means we have no game, right? If you're listening, if you don't know sports, a bye week means there's no there's no game that week. So you just practice for no game. And so Pearl Jam was coming to town, and we're like, hey, coach, uh, since there's no game this week, me and a couple other guys, we want to go to the Pearl Jam concert. Can we go on? thursday or whatever and he was like you know what yeah enjoy that concert man and we were like no oh, shit thanks coach he's like yeah fuck yeah go 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 see pearl jam and we were like great so we go to the concert next practice we have a regular practice and then he calls out like eight of us like the eight guys that went he's like i want you guys stand right here at the goal line and we're like looking around we're like what's going on and we're on the game field and then he's like cue it up and then he puts pearl jam on the loudspeakers nah, dude, yeah. dude, yeah. i like yeah. this guy yeah. <laughs> so pearl jam starts playing and we're like oh shit you had to run your ass off we had to do suicides 100 yard suicides oh nah -uh. so that every five yards every 10 Every 10 so yards. So that's 10 end zone, 20 end zone, 30 end zone, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100. I mean, it was, I mean, I, I it was the most gas. I, I thought I was going to have a heart. And the whole time, the whole What's time. What's he playing? I'm still alive. He's playing, but he, he's playing air guitar. He's going, oh. <laughs> like jamming out like that. Yeah. Loving it. And the whole team's watching us do the yeah. hundreds. Yeah. yeah. He's like, how's that concert, boys? <laughs> Jeremy spoken. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. That's, that's good. Coach Rock. That is really good. That's right pretty there. good. He cued it all. I love cued it. Cued it up. I love yeah. it. That's great. Yeah. Did you have one? I had good coaches. I had uh, Mr. Carfine. He was a great coach. Coach Kessler was a great coach. Uh, high school soccer. Um, uh, but one of my favorites, just because you could, you can't do it anymore, and it's one of my favorites of all time. Is a guy. He was just a, I mean, it's just little league baseball. I'm in middle school, and this guy was probably in his early twenties. His name was Al, mm -hmm. and he was like greasy hair, dark sunglasses, jeans with the hip chain, you know, ball cap, yeah. smoking cigarettes at the at practice. At, always, not only at. This is why I liked him because yeah. we laugh about it now. Like you could never do this, but when you're like when he would lean over you, like you know, when a coach like gets around you to show you how to bunt, yeah, that cigarette, he'd be like, Let me show you, man. It'd be hanging right here and it would be burning your eyes and shit. You know, you're like, Ah, damn. You're like, Coach, I can't see, man. It's burning my eyes. He's like, Why aren't you bunting right? I'm like, It's just your fucking cigarettes burning my eyes, man. But it'd be hanging right here and it'd just be slowly going up. You're like, Oh, shit. 
try to bunt and shit, and he would cuss and yell, and he'd be out there on first base smoking cigarettes and sending you to second. You could never. Never. You no. could never do that now. There's a couple. Not one parent said anything like, hey, don't smoke no. in my kid's face. No. <laughs> Nothing. Like, he's a coach. So There's a, he's the he's coach, man. <laughs> coach cares. Coach Al, man. <laughs> coach Al. Fucking cigarette hanging out. There was about. a, there was a, a few years ago. I think it was the end, finally the end of an year. There was a soccer coach. It was like a Chilean or Italian coach who was smoking on the pitch, and he was like, ah, 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 <laughs> yelling. You, see, you can't smoke. do that anymore. He it just ended. It, it was a few oh, years oh, ago. Oh, oh, oh. He was fucking there. He is. Look at <laughs> <laughs> How about um? Oh, I can't foul believe mouth. Chef, of course. Yeah, his uh, his name escapes me. The the fighter that would smoke right after he'd win. Mayorga was it? Mayorga, Carlos Mayorga. Did he smoke right after? he Yeah, won? he would train. If you look him up, and I, there's I nothing like boxing training. M a y o r g a. I think he died. Carlos Mayorga, I think it was, and he would smoke. He'd beat your ass, and then as soon as they pick him up on the shoulders, he'd light up immediately. Really, immediately in the ring. Yeah, and those those like. Maruga. Murga? M A try M A Y O R G A. My or yeah, there you go. That's him, the boxer. Yeah. There's my orga smoking. I see. That is smoking yeah, right in smoking the interview and during shit. training. Look, 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 look. <laughs> in the interview with Larry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right after the fucking fight. He was a cigarette smoker. Yeah. He loves it. It's hilarious. No, that search that you put, it said on drinking and smoking during training. That's what one of the video results was. You go back, that second one. Look at that. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I smoke, I drink, I do my shit, man. That is hilarious. Why are you smoking and drinking? Because I'm trying to get strong. That's what I do, man. It's what I do, bro. Yeah, they're clearly, that's what they're asking him about, yeah. <laughs> he's like, look, my lungs are strong, man. You imagine like this is a guy that they're like run twelve miles this morning. He's like, all right, and then gets back. He's like, just getting ready to to box. Remember, I used to tell you my buddies would see like Jamal Lewis in the strip clubs and stuff, and they'd all be smoking cigarettes. I'm like, that's our fuck. That's a two thousand yard back. Yeah, he's, he's number smoking. two all time. I think me might have just got beat, but I think he's actually number two all time behind Eric Dickerson for best season, and he's chain smoking. <laughs> chain smoking and winning super bowls like yeah. how yeah. how how are you that athletic and then you see him winded probably somewhere and you're like oh okay come on jamal <coughs> i saw him one time at uh hard rock in lauderdale you did yeah in the elevator i said what's up he was fucking lit was he he's wide too. that's a big man his eyes were like Oof. i was like what's up john and he was like what's up man? Yeah. It was up. Uh, it was up, uh, bro. <laughs> you win big tonight? Nah, nah, man. I'm down. I'm down right now. I'm going to smoke a pack of cigarettes right now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Get, get ready to train tomorrow. That's unbelievable, man. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that was more common. You've seen like the name of stuff, beer and a cigarette at halftime. That's crazy. In the 60s? They're just like. Yep. I've seen, uh, what's his name? Is it Len Dawson? There's a famous picture. Oh, I think it's yeah. him smoking a cigarette at halftime yeah. and shit, like at a Super Bowl and shit. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fuck? I thought Namath was like that. Doesn't... Probably. They all yeah. did back then. Johnny Unitas told this story one time when he, like later in his career, he got uh, sent to San Diego from Baltimore and he said he was sitting in the locker room and he said, I've been around guys. They all smoke cigarettes or everything, but this one. This was just one cigarette, and it just kept coming down the line. I thought, Jesus Christ, these guys can't afford their own cigarettes. And then when it got to me, I was like, oh, I'm good. That ain't for me, man. So they smoke weed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's like where it started to get in the Lawrence Taylor years, the weed and the coke and all that shit. Yeah. Before the NFL cleaned their act up. And then it went to steroids, and now they're. Apparently, like, half the NBA is high during games. Yeah. During games. I believe that yeah. they're the only professional sports i could be wrong that don't test they don't test for weed yeah yeah because they're like do you want a league yeah yeah. (laughs) do you want a league you want to keep playing right yeah yeah and it's a real it is a real players league so you know that cba was like we smoke weed so let's let's cut the shit yeah and and also that's supposed to be the now people are surprised but that's supposed to be the league that's uh using the most testosterone too is that right yeah yeah like a lot of players are you know jamming up man 
especially the guys that are over 30. Yeah, well, they need to, I yeah. guess. That makes sense. Recovery, you know? Yeah, it's brutal on your body, so they're they're just shooting up. Pretty wild. It'd be, fun. It'd be fun as shit to be an NBA caliber player, smoke weed, and just play basketball all the time. Can you imagine how fucking fun that would be? It's good and be that good. Be that stuff. good. Yeah, dialed in like that. I'd be out. I love. I'd just be. I'd be. I wouldn't even care about dunking. I'd be dishing to everybody. Yeah, dish. I'd be, whoop, let yeah. you go up to the rim and get one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, I was high as shit when I did that. <laughs> That'd be the fun part is you'd be watching those highlights. Like, man, can, we, can you believe how high we were we when were you alley that shit, shit to me? You could, I mean, they probably take gummies and everything. Even think oh, about yeah. the gummies. Take them two hours before the game. You're probably soaring. I mean, you're watching warm ups. You're like, why are these guys laughing? They're yep. laughing during <laughs> yeah, warm ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're high as shit. <laughs> NBA is high. Yeah, as shit. they're high as fuck, man. Well, I know NFL players smoke too. I, I've had oh, a, yeah. I've had a couple of them tell me that um, they know when they're going to get their test. No, it's he, he, the actual quote. I I've talked to two. They both said the same thing. They said to test positive for weed in the NFL. Quote: You have to be retarded. Yeah, because they literally give you. This window. It's going to be June 25th, yeah, guys. That's, that's what they June tell. 20, like this, you test, from 12 to 2. Yeah. And then they're like, outside of that window, you do not get Just tested stop. again. stop, yeah. You have to be that's a complete it. moron. And also, I know that if you, if the, if someone's outed in the NFL, if you see like Tom Segura of the Cincinnati Bengals test a positive for marijuana, it's your second offense. Yeah. They keep your first one quiet. But you got to be a clown. I mean, you really have to be yes. so fucking stupid at Even this point. Even I could fucking stop yeah. doing that. Yeah. Right? You could do it for a window. For You talk about for millions of dollars. Yeah. I'd quit for the fucking my entire career. Sure. Just all you got to do is stay out of it. The, and then you don't have to. Right. Just out of this window. That's it. And then they go, once that thing is ended. You could smoke the rest of the year the until of the year. June of the next year. Yeah. 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 I, I've That's talked right. to dudes. They're like, they're like, when the games end, we, we fire up. Smoking in the locker room right before we uh, go to the team plane. Like, they're high as shit on planes. People are are eating uh, gummies on planes. Mm -hmm. Some dude, uh, it, was, it was a story about it. He fired up a blunt on the on the on on an international flight back. Nah. -uh. On one of the international flights. A football play? Yeah. <laughs> nah. And they, so the flight attendant goes, you can't do that. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then she walked away, and then he just lit it back up again. Bullshit. Yeah, he said there's smoke all over the yeah, cabin. The whole plane. The whole plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is insane when you think about it. Like They used to let you smoke. Even when I was a kid, you could still smoke on a plane. Yeah. They had an ashtray. Remember, there used to be an ashtray right there. Yeah, and then there was like rest. forever it was just like locked off. Mm -hmm. after you, yeah, and when I was a kid going In to a Peru, tube. they had a, for international flights, it was a smoking section. Yeah. Which is hilarious. The curtain that's going like to block a, the smoke. Uh, from row 16 back, you could smoke. I mean, imagine being row 15. You're like, you're, that, that's, everyone's smoking. Mm -hmm. And you would just walk back there, and, and people were just, it was a social thing. People, everyone was like talking, laughing, smoking, drinking. That was a lot of the flights that I took to Peru when I was a kid. All just Cigarette smoke smoke, yeah. 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 And you could also smoke anywhere, just anywhere. You could, you'd land people smoking in the airport, you know. Yeah, you used to be able to walk anywhere and smoke. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, we're, who's about to outlaw? Well, you can't like smoke cigarettes anywhere. Australia, that was a real crazy one. Uh, uh, packs of cigarettes were $50 a Get pack. Get the fuck out Yeah, of Jeff here. Tate ended up, he ended up doing the hilarious bit about it. But yeah, he went to buy cigarettes. He was like, they were $50. And he bought them. Well, yeah, he was like, his joke, he was like, he was like, no, I I just want one pack. And and they were like, yeah, it's 50 it's 55. Dollars. 50 American? Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, they may, and also like you can't there's no like if you walk outside, they're like you can't smoke here. He's like, "Where can I smoke?" And they're like, "Well, wait the fuck away from here." Like there's no like area to go to. It was it was very funny. Um and they were I was surprised at this because usually like all the Latin American places are so lax on everything. But Mexico City, like, really coming down on smoking. I thought that was surprising. They're like, it's becoming more and more strict about not wanting cigarettes anywhere. I'm seeing a lot of smoking down here in Austin. Yeah? Everybody down here smokes cigarettes. Hmm. Everywhere I've been. I've only been to the club and up and down 6th Street, but everybody's smoking cigarettes down here. I'm going to go tonight. I'm going to check out the club. Yeah, man. it's awesome. I saw it's it I saw it a couple times. Club in the world. No um, doubt. Joe Rogan a, did it. He did it, right? He did it. Yeah. No doubt.
I saw it a couple of times on its way to being built. Um, you know, I saw it like in its, when it was an empty building and then I saw it when it was like halfway done and then I saw it when it was about 85% done. This will be the first time I see it like as a completed. It's so well thought out, like, especially it's for the comedian like like i said you could go right to a private balcony from the green room to watch or your people could watch um you can go right to the stage without ever having to go through the audience in both rooms and leave um it's built in a way that you don't have to really be around fans and things like that cool. um and then that arch over the stage changes colors like the energy is unlike anything right now. The fans are so stoked to be in there. The comics are stoked to be in there. The lineups are the best in the world. It's crazy. Yeah. It's awesome. That's and, awesome. And the comics in there are good. You know what I mean? They're all good. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait to check it out. Joe did it again, man. That's awesome. He did. Fucking nail the home run. Well, um, if you have not seen it yet, make sure you go to YouTube and check out Ryan Sickler's new stand-up special. It's called Lefty Son. Please. Uh, subscribe to his channel. Rate it. Give it a thumbs up. But most importantly, share it. Send it to a friend. Post it on Twitter. Post it on, uh, on, on Instagram. Post it on TikTok. Share the damn thing. That's how these things uh, get, get known and get out there. You got to like tell people about it. So watch it, enjoy it, and share it with people. Uh, it's great to see you, brother. You too, brother. Thank you for everything. Of course. Love you, man. Love you. Bye, guys. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two bears, one cave.